You may be taking your next golf lesson from today's guest who's ready to be a club pro, and he's gotten to meet some of the legends of the game. Join me now is yet another guest that is way better at golf than I am. It's Damon Boyce, an incredible high school career, been around the junior circuit a little bit, and now you're over at the club uh, working on being a pro, man. First, uh, what has really gone into you being this good at golf? Because I'm really jealous. Uh, a lot of practice, a lot of hard work, and a lot of support. A lot of support, for real. Tell me a little bit about just the, that supporting cast that you have, whether it's coaches at Minot, other kind of junior swing coaches, because I've heard that answer before from a lot of good golfers. Uh, so a lot of coaching, uh, high school coaches helping me, uh, supporting me through high school, uh, especially my parents pushing me to strive for more and pushing me to practice my hardest to get everything out of it so I can potentially go somewhere with this. When was the first time that you beat your high school coach, Shane Hanagraphs? Uh... I can't recall. It's been. It's been. It was so long ago. So, like when you were in like the sixth grade or what? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, it's been a tough match with him. So he puts <laughs> up a good game too. Where I know you're at the club right now. So I mean, I don't know if that's going to be your answer just because you work here there or not. But what are kind of like your favorite courses that you've gotten to play? Uh, in North Dakota, I've got to play like Hawk Tree, Bully Pulpit, Riverwood. Uh, what other ones? Grand Forks Country Club. Those are probably my top three favorite ones. Bully Pulpit has to be probably, what, the prettiest friggin' course around here in North Dakota. I mean, you kind of go in and out of, the, like, a bunch of bluffs and stuff. What's that like, uh, whether it's maybe, like, a twilight hour thing there or when you get out in the morning? Uh, so I've really only played Bully Pulpit for tournament-wise. Mm -hmm. It's really fun, especially getting up in the morning, seeing the sunrise, and just being in the Badlands. Uh other than that, not trying to be scared of trying to find your ball in the native grass and not getting rattlesnakes coming at you, but it's really pretty. It's fun. That's it's more, experience. more than a one-stroke penalty getting bit by a rattlesnake, huh? Yeah. 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 How about uh, spreading out outside of North Dakota? You've gotten to uh, be at a bunch of uh, cool places, whether you're playing or just hanging out. Uh, so, yeah, I just recently got back from Arizona working at Desert Forest down there and got to play a few courses in Arizona that were pretty specific spectacular and especially playing at our home course desert forest where i was working at that was a sight to see it was pretty you're at minot country club is that the most hilly course you've ever seen uh have you walked it you can walk it probably better than guys like me or what yeah i've, only, I've yeah. only walked it once because it's mandatory to cart it but yeah it's it's tough to walk I remember there was a couple like high school or junior tournaments where they were stuck walking and whatever. But I mean, those were those guys and the guys like us. We can get a couple carts, huh? Yeah. Thank God. Thanks for the hookup. I always say, hey, it's okay. Damon can let me have the cart, okay? <laughs> Even though I'm not a member, appreciate it. Now, there's two different things uh, between your favorite course to play and uh, maybe the most difficult courses. What, what kind of uh, fits in there? Uh, depending on where we're talking about. Uh, where I was working down in Arizona. Uh, desert courses are pretty tough. A lot of sand. A lot of like desert. Like <laughs> when they when they design those courses, they design them to be tough. But uh, North Dakota wise, I'd probably say Hawk Chief, Bully Pulpit, and Riverwood are probably the top three. I'd say are pretty difficult. Uh, people have learned that I like to have fun at Wildwood because the membership is super cheap. And hey, there actually is no sand. So you go from a ton of sand in Arizona, I'm sure, yep. to maybe a place up here a little more comfortable for guys like me. So why do you want to become a club pro? It's one thing to be a golfer through high school, but to make it like a career, that's another whole step no matter how good you are. So yeah, uh, just growing up, golf became my passion. Uh, and I was thinking about going to college, but then I was like, do I want to sit in classrooms and learn something that I don't know if I'd really like? And I'd rather pursue something in golf and be happy with what I'm doing in my life. So uh, we looked up some golf stuff and found the PGA Associate Program and caught my interest and decided to roll with it and loved it ever since. Yeah, because I've heard of golf course management degrees before, mm -hmm. but what's kind of the certification that you have to go through to become a pro that isn't like the college path? Uh, so there's three different levels. So you have like golf management one, uh, then level two. Uh, it's like giving more lessons, getting more in depth. Uh, then level three is like uh, getting just the final stuff, like 
you learn some greenskeeper stuff just so you know because you're working on a golf course and then just wrapping it up to learn like the business side of what a pro does like sales and stuff this is the pga associate program is that what you said yeah pga slash pgm associate program do you have to go like somewhere far out for the first part of that or is that just all through being at the club uh no you can decide like where you want to work you just have to work at like a pga certified facility with like a head pro and like has to be like within their standards but you can go elsewhere like i went elsewhere this winter just to keep my points going because say like i have to work so many hours in a week and each month I do that I get a point and I need 36 work credits to do that so that's why I went elsewhere this winter just to keep my points going and learn more and just experience different courses was that that Arizona stop or somewhere else that was Arizona okay got you what's kind of the the, along the way for this program obviously you're learning a lot but what's kind of like the skill evaluation aspect of things I feel like even a schmuck like a schmuck like me, if I like fill out the worksheets or whatever you got or shadow a pro, that's one thing. But I mean, I suck and you're good. Is there any kind of you know skill based thing like you have to go like shoot a bunch of seventy fives in a row to maintain like hey this this guy's a pro or what? Uh, so before you get into a program, you have to take a PAT test. You have to play thirty six holes and shoot within fifteen strokes of par, so par seventy two, and play 18, get a lunch break, and then you go back out to play another 18. And then once you are once you shoot within the 15 shots and you're uh, considered in the program, and then you can also get like a partial pass to where if you don't get it the first time, uh, you can retry again, but they'll just part- you'll be partially in the program. And then, yeah, that's basically it. Then you uh, register into the program, uh, you have to take a uh, qualifying test about like the rules, uh, about the game of golf. Uh, once you pass that, then you can register for your level one. Then. Okay, I think going into that, I would know that I'm not even close to like the 15 over or whatever. Unless I'd be great at like the mini golf, you know, PGA mm-hmm. approval whenever that comes down and happens in the near future. Maybe I'll start it. I don't mm-hmm. know, but I mean, I would enjoy the day, even though like I would know I wouldn't. Even close to qualify. I mean, there's a lunch break, so I mean, that's really nice to hear. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I bet that was awesome. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, going back to uh, Minot Country Club, what do you kind of do on a day-to-day basis out there? Uh, depends upon the day. Uh, I'll either be most likely in the shop working uh, as I'm the assistant professional out there, so I'll help Andrew with any needs in the shop, uh, making sure everything's clean in the shop, uh, doing lessons if people need lessons at all. Uh, if it's in my schedule. Other things are uh, like junior camp. Junior camp's coming up this week for us, so I'll be helping with junior camp. Other, other things is just making sure everyone's doing their duties out there and helping where I can help out. Okay, so we've seen you a little bit on the KMOT golf tips. Whenever the guys are busy or they just – maybe they're not good at that skill and they want you to cover up for – their lack of game in some different area. So who is going to win in a foursome at the Minot Country Club between Damon Boyce, Andy Schmitz, Brody Bosch, and Alex Dagenstein? I don't know. If we have a foursome, I better sharpen my game up a little bit so I can kick up on them a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. I think you're, you you got to be right there, right? Yeah, uh, I hope so. I'll put a tough game in there. You're worried about repercussions, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like working with those with those guys? Uh, there's, you got your good days and you got your bad days, but it's, it's fun out there. It's experience. What kind of is the comparison between, I know like Alex, whenever he's on a golf tip, he's like, I'm Alex Dagenstein from Coastal Carolina, a PGA intern or whatever, compared to what like you're doing right now. What's the, what are those tracks like? Are they similar? Are they way different? Uh, tracks and wise, what are you saying? Like, there? like career track. I mean, like, he's like, I'm, I'm from Coastal Carolina, I'm the intern here, mm-hmm. versus uh, Damon going through the PGA associate program. Uh, yeah, I mean, it backs him up a little bit more, like, makes me think about it a little bit, because I'm not, like, in a really related college, mm-hmm. and he is, and he's getting, like, a business degree on top of his, Okay. so it's helping him a little bit more, I think, and... He gets to actually sit in the classroom to where someone's teaching him what I'm learning while I'm working. So I really have to push myself more than 
he has to push himself. It sounds like you get to play more golf, though, so, I mean, that's the more important thing, right? Uh, I wish. <laughs> I need to start getting out there a little bit more. Okay. So, um, when you're talking about, I mean, your end game is what, being like a head pro? Yeah, head you pro say? or, like, a teaching instructor at a golf course, so... Mm -hmm. But head pro, definitely, yeah, that's what I'd like to do. That's sweet, because I see, like, a lot, I have a lot of friends that are teachers that are on the younger side, because naturally a lot of teachers, they coach and they relate to the young athletes really well from a young a younger age, and so they they go out to different Class B schools around here, whether it's like Kenmare, uh, South Prairie, Glenburn, Velva, what have you, and they do all that coaching. Some of them really like being there, and then some, while they think it's awesome being in those Class A schools, they're from Minot. They like to kind of get closer to that being like MPS or something. Mm -hmm. So I kind of preface that just for the point of if you want to be like a head pro, do you look at like other nine hole or courses around Minot or what do you kind of expect that to be? Or do you hang around for Minot Country Club for a long time? Do you have any kind of big plan about this would be a great spot to be my first head pro job because it's what I want to do, you know? Uh, just depends upon what opens up. I'll have to do some researching out there, but honestly, whatever opens up, I'd be glad to take it because I'm very young and it'd be a very cool experience just to be a head pro somewhere. So honestly, whatever is available, it'd be nice to stay around here just as families here right now. And it was a good experience in Arizona, but still kind of young and still nice to see family once in a while. So if the job opens up somewhere around my nights, I definitely probably wouldn't stay somewhere for a long time not like the minor country club but mm -hmm. i'd definitely be researching to see if there's elsewhere we just got done doing an interview with uh tracy and sarah bond and i could tell and we have, we have your mom right here listening to the interview about this and tracy was getting a little teary just thinking about her kid going to jamestown and now here i am talking to you about maybe hey arizona looks pretty cool but Sounds like you want to be uh, close to home, and that's awesome, man. Now, tell me a little bit about, we've touched on Arizona, North Dakota courses, but you've had some great experiences when it comes to, I believe, what, TPC Twin Cities getting out in Minnesota. Uh, how were you able to get in touch with helping out in some pretty big tournaments? Uh, so that was when I went to go actually take my PAT test for my first time in Minnesota uh, when my dad... Uh, wanted to go check on it because we went to a course and someone made comment of the senior tour being played and we accidentally went in like back exit and started talking to two people and talked to them for a good hour or so and my dad jokingly talking around with them ends up me being able to carry sign for a couple of groups and then I was in the pool for the following year and we just stayed in touch with the two ladies Nicole and Brittany and that year, I was able to caddy for Ben Crenshaw and do care sign for John Daly and stuff. So, so the the PAT test down at uh, TPC Twin Cities. You saying the course is easy or what? Oh, uh, it was actually not at TPC Twin Cities. Okay, the, okay. <laughs> the PAT test was at Bunker Hills. All right. Uh, that, that sounds was... like my place to be. Bunker freaking hill. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not a fun course. Uh, it was it was fun for my first time, but. Uh, very difficult for a course that I had never previously saw on. and coming into a blind track it was very difficult especially being in Minnesota with all the trees there well it didn't suit it very well yeah what were those guys that you got to caddy for again uh, Ben Crenshaw I caddied for and then I carried sign for like John Daly and Lee Trevino and not cool. Lee Trevino uh, Kurt Triplett okay all those guys are legendary for one way or another you can talk about John Daly Lee um, you said Lee Trevino or Nalia? Uh, okay, triplet. okay, rather him, and then uh, Crenshaw. What did, did you get really close to them? I mean, what did you really get to, did to talk about with those guys? I know they probably they're in the senior tour, like they're in a tournament, but they probably have had other times in their career where they're taking things way more seriously. Mm -hmm. So, what was it like getting to meet those guys and maybe get some golf tips sponsored by KMOT? Uh, so Ben Crenshaw, uh, was actually very quiet. I got a drive in the cart when I was caddying for him, thankfully, but, uh, he was very quiet. Really the only tip he really gave me was, uh, when we were going by 18, going over the water, he's like always club up because the water drags the ball down in yardage. So he's always saying like club up. Um, the other people, when I was carrying the sign, they kind of took it a little more serious is they kind of want the money and stuff. But you can just hear what they talk like with their caddies. They joke around with their caddies, but it was it was very nice. They were 
really polite and stuff and very funny once they're done with the rounds. So to be able to joke around, you have to be a caddy, but then when you're a sign guy, they're they're serious and they're scoreboard watching. So they don't yeah. need to, they don't need, you just got to have the right score so they know what on earth is going on or what? Yep. I remember one time I had this score wrong and they just politely told me to change it. <laughs> yeah. Politely on a golf course versus oh, a little passive aggressive maybe on the golf course. Yeah. And also, I think you told me one time we were doing a news story for just this trip was if you get a swing tip from Crenshaw, he's like, hey, I'm probably not the best person to take a fundamental lesson with, but I mean, it kind of works for me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how much do you kind of see that when you're looking at a lot of the pros where it, it they just find a way that it works? It's cool just to see different ways that people have different swings and especially like when you like say for instance go on social media and like see their instructors trying to help them it's just interesting to see what tips they give them and tips that I could probably learn to give other golfers that may not have the experience with so it's very interesting to see how people make it work because some people like Matt Matthew Wolf like he has a ordinary swing that's fit just for him like it's it's crazy like i'd say if it works for you stick with it mm -hmm. and when you're teaching lessons at the club what's kind of the overall skill that's most important for taking that next step up and being a better golfer by like five maybe ten shots whether i'm trying to go 100 to 90 or the next guy's going 90 to 80 80 to 70 and so on uh, I'd say, especially just trying to drop a few shots, it could all start just by your grip. Your grip can make a big difference on what way the ball will go. Taylor Teske told me one time that I got to switch to interlock right away. I don't even, like, I'm uncomfortable. I just do one thumb up. And basically, he's like, yeah, if you, if you ever want to be good, if you're serious about doing it, then uh, best to do that right away. It might take a whole summer, but like, I'm, I'm not serious <laughs> enough. I'm going to have to do that sometime so is when you're teaching lessons out there is it ever kind of weird where a guy like a club member might be like super older than you but you're way better than them at all but they're just happy to have your help or what oh it's actually not too awkward it's kind of nice mm -hmm. because they like to joke around with you and heckle you a little bit but it's always a good time when you're teaching someone and making someone happy and hopefully helping take a couple of shots off their game my problem is every time no matter what it is, I, I top up a club at like 150 to 180. I can't hit a 9-iron past like 80 yards or whatever. I just can't get the one club to do the yards that it's supposed to do. I just know I can top out, so I do three wood off the deck, shot one, shot two, try to catch up with chipping and putting. How do you get the ball to travel as far as it's supposed to from the 4-iron to like the short wedges? Because that's my number one question. So just depending upon like the club, so say for instance you're hitting like a four iron, it all depends upon where you put it in your stance. Like your four iron's supposed to be a little bit more forward of what you are hitting, like your wedges and your mid irons. And say for instance you're going downwards to like your eight or nine iron, that goes a little bit more back towards the middle of your stance and so forth for your wedges. The one magical day I had in high school where it all went right and they all did what they were supposed to do was one range practice and I put the ball like ahead of my front foot. It looked ridiculous, but it worked and it never worked again. So it was a, it was a rare sight. What uh, were your favorite parts of the match that just got done between uh, Tiger and Peyton and Phil and Tom Brady? That was a pretty fun afternoon. Yeah, it was, it was funny. It was just funny watching uh, even the announcers just talking uh, was – who was out there? Uh, Justin Thompson. Oh, he was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, JT. Yeah, Justin Thomas. He was saying, like, uh, oh, boy, there's the Tom Brady that we knew from the front nine after Brady was terrible, and he hit that one from 150 in and then just slink back down and yep. whatnot. Yeah, that was pretty cool. He definitely has a future in it. Who did you like going into that day, and were you surprised at all about how things kind of unfolded, both with the fun aspect and then just the team that ultimately won? Uh, I was liking Philby's. I saw some videos on social media of him just being his quirky self and saying some funny stuff. So it was it was a cool outcome and it was funny to watch. And I'm glad it didn't get postponed like they were thinking it was going to be. Yeah, it was dicey. They had like a 45 minute delay, but then they just worked through it. And just like even at the last match was out at the West Coast, or I, I know, but still like it got like crazy dark and like they had to do some camera work to make it even look normal because if you look at like the check presentation picture, it, it looks like they're at a campfire. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely an awesome day. And it was the second weekend of 
cherry matches. The first one, uh, part of the foursome had guys like Ricky Fowler and Dustin Johnson. So I'm curious between those younger guys and like the legends like Tiger and Phil, who do you kind of most look up to and identify with? Uh, Ricky Fowler is my idol. I've liked him since day one, and he will always stay my idol. So I always look up to him because he's got a he's got a good game, and hopefully get to meet him one day soon, and maybe throw out my game to him and see. <laughs> what do you What do you like about his game? Uh he's not a long. I mean, he is a long hitter, but not compared to like Dustin Johnson. So kind of reminds me of me because I'm not a super long hitter, but. I got a good short game, and so does Ricky. Yeah, I don't think anybody's on Dustin's level. I mean, you got a hole-in-one almost from, like, 400 yards out, and he's like, I hit it a little thin, and it rolled up, like, an inch short of just going straight into the hole. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's really cool how you like the young guys, for sure. Now, one more point about the match. We talked about how terrible the weather is. Have you ever played in, like, the driving rain that they had early that day? Oh, yeah. I remember one time even my parents were with uh, – it was, like, I believe the first high school tournament of my senior year, I believe it was, and it was in Dickinson, and I think I was, like, five or six holes through, and I was playing such a good round, and all of a sudden, it just starts snowing and sleeting on us, and uh, the greens just started getting covered with sleet, and then they had to call the tournament for a few hours just to let the sleet off the greens so it didn't get damaged, and it's probably one of my worst experiences with sleet and snow because I've played through rain before too but it's it's tough when you have to play through conditions like that I think we we did a new story with Jack Dempke about like unfortunately your senior year was canceled and what were kind of like your best day memories looking back and he mentioned that day in Dickinson I believe it would have been his sophomore year that he had like the best score of the season or perhaps even his career in just a terrible day so I know exactly what you're talking about for that specific time now looking back at your high school career what were kind of what was the dynamic like of guys supporting each other while also being competitive for a varsity spot and what were kind of the most fun moments that you had with just the guys no matter what you guys were scoring oh yeah it was it was nice because like you all are competing to get a position for varsity but yet everyone still had your back whether you had a good round or not and even your coaches had your back to help support you. And most of the tournaments were either one day, but sometimes two in a row. So everyone had your back and tried to support you for the next day so you could go out and shoot a good round. It's not like it was the end of the world, but they were always there to back you up, and everyone's fighting to try to move up the ladder. Who would you put on your dream scramble for some? Uh, Ricky Fowler, uh, Matthew Wolf. And probably Justin Thompson. Thomas, yeah, for sure. Oh, how is it well does each of those pro guys kind of complement each other's game? Uh, I, they're all pretty young, so I know they like to go heckle each other and just push each other to strive to play better and just practice more and just play play more than the next person just so they can try to beat them. Mm-hmm. What's uh, the... Would you rather have, if it's a clutch putt and a scramble, would you want to be the first guy taking it up or the last one? Uh, I'd probably like to be the last one. Really? What yeah. What if it's like the very last shot at it, either a birdie on the first go-round or you guys are already on mulligan? Isn't there a little pressure there? Yeah, I like being in the pressure. Pressure's fun to be in. It gets your energy up, and once you feel like you did it, and you feel accomplished once you do it awesome and now i remember i got the dream scramble team question from shout out to the facebook group uh, north dakota hackers and scramblers i believe it is on facebook something close to that and i commented back i want tiger jack and arnie and they said yeah that's a dream great answer you don't even have to get out of the car i'm like that's the plan i mean <laughs> i'm gonna drive in the car and not go to drive in the golf ball so that's good i mean it's a safe bet mm-hmm. damon i mean yeah. i don't have the career that you can have in golf so, I mean, you got to go with it. Hey, man, I, this, this has been uh, great. I know we'll get, I'll have to get a lesson in with you sometime at the country club to save my game just this once and take all that back to Wildwood where, boy, hopefully I can just be a freaking god over there. But, uh, Damon Boyce, uh, this has been good, and wish you the best uh, for the rest of your golfing career and really enjoyed watching you at Mile High, man. Thanks. Thank you.